Hello everyone, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. Today I'm going to be discussing what is the difference between two shoulder impingement syndromes. One of these syndromes is more well known than the other. Subacromial impingement syndrome, which is often called shoulder impingement syndrome, and external impingement syndrome is much more well known. So I'm going to be describing what is the difference between subacromial impingement syndrome and posterior internal impingement syndrome, which is often called internal impingement syndrome. In order to completely understand these two conditions, I'm going to give you a quick anatomy lesson. This is a plastic model of the shoulder. It contains the muscles, as you can see. This is the humerus bone, this is the arm bone, and this is the scapula. The scapula is the medical name for the shoulder blade. This bone sticking out right here, this is the collarbone. The collarbone is called the clavicle in medical terminology. You are now looking at the shoulder blade from the back. This right here is called the spine of the scapula. The sp very top part of the spine of the scapula is called the acromion. The acromion has a space called the subacromial space. That is the area that the tendon of the supraspinatus muscle goes through. There are four rotator cuff muscles. The very superior one on the back of the shoulder blade is the supraspinatus. Again, the supraspinatus tendon goes through the subacromial space. The next muscle is called the infraspinatus. In subacromial impingement syndrome, the tendon of the supraspinatus muscle is being pressed down because there is lesser space in the subacromial space. In most cases, the shoulder blade has moved away from the spine into a protracted position and it is tilted slightly forward. This usually occurs due to a strength imbalance where the pectoralis minor muscle and the pectoralis major muscle have overpowered the muscles in the back of the shoulder and it pulls the scapula into a bad position. This is what's called scapular dyskinesis. I have a video on that. I will put a link to it in the description box. I don't want to go into too much detail on it today. But what happens when the scapula is moved into a poor position is the space under the acromion, the subacromial space, gets smaller and it presses down on either the tendon or on the bursa sacs in that area and it creates pain. That is for subacromial impingement syndrome. In internal impingement syndrome, the head of the humerus, again the humerus is the medical name for the arm bone, the head of the humerus has moved backwards. So what happens when the arm is put into a position of abduction and what is called external rotation? The head of the humerus moves backwards and puts pressure on the tendons of the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus. External impingement syndrome, which is also known as subacromial impingement syndrome and shoulder impingement syndrome encompasses etiologies of external compressive forces leading to subacromial bursitis and bursal sided injuries to the rotator cuff. It is a painful and often long lasting condition affecting function and quality of life. And it occurs because there is a reduction of the subacromial space. And there may be impingement of the supraspinatus tendon in the subacromial space. This is usually caused by a strength imbalance in the shoulder where the anterior shoulder muscles overpower the posterior shoulder muscles. This leads to scapular instability, poor scapular posture, and poor scapular motion. The symptoms of subacromial impingement syndrome include pain and a pinching sensation in the subacromial space. This is often made worse by reaching overhead. Internal impingement syndrome 
also known as posterior impingement syndrome and often abbreviated to PII, occurs at the posterior lateral articular side of the rotator cuff as it abuts the posterior superior glenoid rim and labrum when the shoulder is in a maximum abduction and external rotation position. This is called the late cocking phase in the throwing positions. Pain occurs due to compression of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus tendons by the posteriorly rotated greater tuberosity of the humeral head against the posterior superior portion of the glenoid fossa. That was a great deal of medical terminology and anatomy. But the main difference between these two conditions is the area where the impingement is occurring and the structures that are being impinged. Again, subacromial impingement syndrome is impingement of the supraspinatus tendon and also pressure being placed on the bursa sacs in the subacromial space. Internal impingement syndrome is pressure on the tendons of the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus by the humeral head being rotated post Interior. Both of these conditions are painful and performance limiting conditions. So if you think you have either of these conditions, please see a medical professional immediately. You can see a doctor of chiropractic like myself, or you can see another type of doctor. Viewing this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. I have done videos on both of these conditions, so I will put the links to those videos in the description box below, along with the link for scapular dyskinesis, like I mentioned earlier. Thank you everybody for watching today's video. Please feel free to like this video. If you have questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them in the comments section below, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Page. Thank you again for watching today's video and have a great day.